Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is lovely here in Oradell, New Jersey, uh, just to let everyone know that. Uh, that's Bergen County, New Jersey. And, and for the next few minutes, I, I just want to take you through our experience of ExamSoft. And um, as it says, I, I want to take you through the easy path to using uh, student iPads on, on exam day. And I, I think it's a, a wonderful thing. And, and, and please, please indulge me for the next few minutes. Um, it would not be fair of me uh, to do a presentation uh, without providing you uh, the playbook. Uh, these are the things I hope to cover today. Um, who is he? The he is me. Uh, I'll give you a little background about myself. Um, then I want to tell you our story, the Bergen Catholic story in technology. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, why ExamSoft and the, uh, the real decision we made for this solution. I want to tell you how we implemented the solution and the challenges that went along with that impl implementation. Um, I want to share with you some of our faculty perspectives. I want to share with you how we um, began to implement this, this solution. I also want to talk to you about the student body responses, and I also want to talk to you about the impact that it's having on the exam process. And at the end, I will share the uh, reliability of the system, and I, I really want to tell you uh, three things about the infrastructure that you will need in order to uh, make sure that ExamSoft works well in, in your school setting. So those things I will cover in the next few minutes. So let's begin. This is me, um, Brother Christopher Damien Hall, uh, CFC. Uh, I'm a member of the Congregation of Christian Brothers, uh, founded by Edwin Rice in 1802 in Ireland. Um, I'm not Irish, but, uh, but I am an Irish Christian brother. And I've been an uh, Irish Christian brother now for 24 years. Um, just to give you a little background of my education, um, I'm all over the board as far as education. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong learner. Um, bachelor's degrees in, in both um, psychology and religious studies. Um, educational technology and planning is what I studied as a, a graduate degree. And I moved on to school administration and I began my doctorate, and I hope to begin it again uh, here in New Jersey. So lifelong learning has always been um, something that, that I've been interested in, and, and definitely as far as, um, you know, it's necessary to be a, a learning leader. Um, where have I been? Uh, I've been in nine schools. I've been in nine schools. And in each of those nine schools, uh, I, I know I've left a piece of me um, because it's important to make sure um, that uh, you leave a, you leave an impression. Um, and in those nine schools, I did some great things, and I enjoyed myself. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to be uh, religious and be able to move and, and impact education all over in, in different locations. Um, what have I done? Um, one of the lines in my religious order is uh, brother has been, and I'm, uh, and I'm that brother has been. I've done everything from, from teach to coach, I've uh, been department chair on two occasions, uh, athletic director, dean of discipline, uh, vice principal for academics, a principal, a president, a regional director of technology. Um, so I, I think I bring a lot of experience to the table, um, and I think I provide a, a great um, overview of education when I, when I talk about technology and how it, it should um, and will impact our, our young people. Let's switch gears here for a moment. Let me tell you about our story, uh, Bergen Catholic High School. It's an all-boys high school uh, founded in Oradell, New Jersey, uh, in Bergen County. Uh, we are about 15, 15 miles from New York City. We're very, very close to George Washington Bridge. Um, we were founded in 1955, and we have the pleasure of being in the same location since 1955. You know, next year we will be celebrating our Diamond Jubilee, uh, 60 years in this location. And that's 60 years of providing quality Catholic education um, to uh, young men in the Archdiocese of New York, and particularly um, providing that, that history of excellence here in Bergen County. Um, and, and understand we do that both academically and athletically. People may know us for our athletic prowess, and, and we're very proud of that as well. 
But our, our star is that we are very, very academically inclined. Um, we have over 10,000 graduates. Uh, students come to our school from really 82 different cities and towns in New Jersey and New York. Um, we have students that cross the bridge every day and come from uh, Manhattan, Harlem. Uh, we have students that, that drive uh, 45 minutes away from upstate New York. We have students that uh, live across the street and are late every day because um, you know proximity makes it easy to be late. Um, so we, we have students all over and we provide this, this excellence, this quality of education to uh, students in all, all over the place. So it's not, uh, it's not that we are a, a local, local school. Right? Another part of our story is since 2002, we have been a one-to-one -one school. Um, in 2000, uh, 2002, we began to introduce laptops into our, our building. Uh, they were Lenovo's. Um, with those laptops, as you can see on our screen, we had the, the standard um, different types of applications and systems that were, were part of uh, being a, a school that introduced technology. Um, our teachers used GradeQuick. Um, our teachers used Edline. Um, we were uh, an exam view school. Uh, most, a, a lot of textbooks, I wouldn't say most, but I'll, I'd say a lot of textbooks come with exam view as, as a, a, a test bank. Um, so a lot of our teachers used um, and still use exam view uh, to develop uh, a lot of their, their tests. Um, we even went so far as to put exam view onto our network so there could be a, a, a way of file sharing in order to um, provide a, a, an exam for students. Uh, so we're, we're, we were steeped in um, exam view. Um, we use Dino as a monitoring tool. Um, it was uh, allowed us to monitor our students and their, their laptops. But we also use Dino to um, provide uh, different lessons to students. Um, we, the teacher could share their laptop or share their screen with students and they can get uh, a real one-on-one um, -on -one type of, of learning that went along with that. Um, and we also, as you see in the top um, left-hand corner, we also uh, we use Scantrons. We were a school that, that used the average things to provide um, its education. We did all that with, with our laptops in place. Right? So it was a, a typical, typical type of setting. Um, if you look at our if you look at our infrastructure um, until 2012 we had 50 megabytes of bandwidth uh, that was that was as strong as our Wi-Fi went um, in 2012 we made the change to go from 50 megabytes of bandwidth to one gig of bandwidth uh, because we knew we wanted to uh, increase the possibility of of the things that we want to do here in school, and then actually a year later we went to two, game, uh, two gig of bandwidth, with the anticipation of making some, some switches to our, uh, our different devices that we're going to use with our students. We, were, uh, we are an uh, all Cisco appliance school. Every access point we had in school was Cisco. Um, we also have ICE, which is the identity, identity service equipment. Uh, which managed, you know, our profiles and our, our users. We have Prime, we have Wireless LAN, um, we have Ironport, we had Cisco, um, and we also had, you know, we had the latest and greatest in what Cisco had to provide. So we were a school, and we are a school, um, that is really, really um, dedicated to making sure that the technology worked and worked well. Right? But we knew that we needed to make a move. We knew we needed to make a move. So how did we begin to make that move? Well, uh, it was heard about January of 2013. The, the message was sent out from our president that we were going to Apple, uh, Apple devices. We decided to make that move to go to Apple devices um, because we had been listening to Apple for about three years and um, we knew that we needed to make a change, and we knew that we wanted to make sure that we were in line with, um, with education and technology in, in, the, in the present year. Apple devices are, are, is, is a direction that, that lots of 
educational institutions are going, so we wanted to make sure that we were, we were in line with them. So September of 2014, um, we go and we begin to implement Apple devices into our, into our, our system, our system of learning. All freshmen receive two devices. So in 2014, we go from a one-to-one -one school to a two-to-one school, and slowly we, we hope to progress all the way up to senior year. Um, we went from uh, we went from just a Lenovo, which we would give to freshmen. To uh, we gave them iPad Minis. We used the iPad Minis uh, particularly for uh, e-text. Um, iPad Minis were also um, uh, there were larger size iPad minis, meaning the, the storage on them were larger. We didn't get the standard 16 gig, we got, this, we got 32 gigs, because as you begin to download uh, six textbooks or so at two gigabytes per, um, you're, going to eat up the, you're going to eat up the storage on those, uh, on those basic iPads. So we got a 32 gig iPad. We also wanted to, the students to use those iPads to, to do creative things. At the same time, uh, we um, provided a MacBook Air for students. Right? And again, the MacBook Air was used for student production. And lots of people say, well, isn't that redundant, having the iPad and having the, the Air? Well, the way we thought about it was this. As students began to um, become more and more comfortable with these devices, um, this, was, this was, would be a concern for us. Um, since 2002, we've had a full time person uh, who would fix laptops. Um, Apple devices truly, truly don't break as much. Um, they really don't need that much attention. And if they do need attention, you take them to the Apple store and the Apple store will attend to them. Our thought was, if students have an iPad and the AirBook is not functioning, well, they have the iPad that will, will double up as the, um, as the, the way that they, they do student production. And vice versa, the iPad goes down, you have an airbook that will allow you to read your text and, and do all that, that, that the text would provide. So you, you had a backup, you had instant backup. Um, and if I were to share you, with you the numbers of repairs and fixes that we've done so far this year, you might agree with me. Um, our, uh, our PCs, we're up to about 430 PCs that we've seen uh, in our our laptop work area uh, with various um, malfunctions and, and problems and issues uh, and we are up to 24 Apple devices that we've seen this year. So it, it has really benefited us and it really has worked well for us. The MacBook Air as you can see is for um, written assignments, the longer written assignments. You're not going to write a five page paper on your iPad. Students can we know they, they can do that. We know that they write MLA uh, papers on, on their iPhones, uh, but you want to make sure that you have a longer, uh, you have a way that it is more comfortable for them to, to do longer written assignments. Um, note taking, um, we hope to incorporate um, campus-wide Evernote into our, um, our tools for learning so that they'll be able to not only have a organized place to, to put their notes, but they have a cloud-based way to provide those notes to themselves. So it's, again, not dependent on, on a device. And, and another good reason for this MacBook, MacBook Air, along with the iPad Mini, is that um, it allows you to do other creative tasks um, that, that can't be completed on the iPad. Right? Once we put these Apple devices into our, our Cisco network that had been really, truly t uh, honed and, and trained and tamed for uh, PC devices, we instantly got it, had issues with uh, connectivity. Um, signals would drop constantly. Well, I, I've been a uh, Mac user for quite some time. Um, I have my original Mac device. Uh, it has always been very good to me, but I also know, and, and this is, a, and this is um, something that I've, I've kind of put together, uh, Mac devices tend to be very, very picky. Right. They tend to be, as, and I'll put it in my vernacular, they tend to be divas. They like to be turned off. They like to be turned on. They like to, they like to be charged at certain times. They like to um, have the best signal. So there's always the, the issue of, of signal dropping. And we noticed this 
uh, very early on in the process. Um, the thing that you also have to keep in mind is that uh, Mac devices are, are personal devices. They're not enterprise devices. So they, they like to do personal type things. It's going to want to rest at some point um, because um, I've had enough of this signal and I'm just going to I'm just going to drop just for a minute or uh, even a millisecond just so I can get better connectivity. Right? So the signal was dropping. Right? We also noticed that we had poor roaming quality. Our students go from classroom to classroom with their with their laptops. Um, the laptop, the laptops and the Apple devices were struggling with with the whole process of roaming. Um, so that became a, a real serious serious issue for us. Um, when you think of these things in place, you, you have to think um, no strong connection. Um, you really mess with the, the, the context of teachers being able uh, to give to give tests. As I said, we were using um, exam view um, on our file server uh, and doing file sharing in order to give tests. Um, if you do not have a strong connection, you are going to have a problem uh, with, with testing. Right? Exam view, as it says, needs a constant connection, a constant clear connection. If the connection is broken, the exam is is turned off for the students, and you may there may be a possibility that they can get back to it. They may not, but that became a real serious issue with our faculty and with our students. And um, when your faculty is upset, um, that's not good. Right? We also had the trouble with with MacBooks not recognizing uh, Twain drivers. Um, there is another option when you have a, a PC. Uh, when you use ExamView, of using or printing out bubble sheets, right? Bubble sheets are, are what almost look like Scantron sheets. These Scantron sheets can be run through your copier that it, that's connected to your network. When it's run through the copier, um, it, it is recognized by a particular driver, and it will read the exams and provide, um, provide a, a score um, for that exam. Well, Max did not recognize Twain drivers, so therefore that whole process was, was out of play for teachers. So with this issue of not having this strong signal and having an issue of connectivity, um, we, were, we were in a, a dire strait. We truly were. Why ExamSoft, if we, we want to change gears? Why did we make this decision? Well, in um, the September of this year, uh, it was really truly decided that we were going to use cloud technology as a solution and that was going to be the movement for the year. Um, cloud technology uh, I believe is, is a great solution because it really truly deals with two things, availability of, of people's work and organization. Right? We provided all our students with a, a Google format of, of email. Right. Of course, with those those Google email uh, accounts, which had our domain, uh, each student received a Google, a Google Drive. <coughs> the Google Drives were uh, 30 gigabytes for the students, <coughs> and for the faculty, those Google Drives really were unlimited. Each of the airbooks that the students received were uh, about a, a 20, 128 gigabyte. Uh, as far as a solid state drive, and um, that was really to force the issue of cloud technology. You should not fill up your laptop with, with lots of stuff. Um, what you want to do is to organize yourself in, in a means of, of using your Google Drive and other cloud technology in order to, to organize yourself and to, and to free your, uh, your appliance or your device and let, and let it work the way it's supposed to work. One of the things that we began to do was we began to um, investigate uh, different cloud solutions for, um, for exam taking. Exam View in the fall presented a, uh, a flyer that went to most of the people that, that used their, uh, their product. It was called Exam View uh, Cloud Solution. Um, now, again, I told you, ExamView is, is a major portion of our operation here. 
it was an application that was widely used at Bergen Catholic, and it was most familiar to the faculty. They truly, truly um, knew exam view backwards and forwards. Um, they knew the exam view t uh, test uh, testing portal, and they knew the exam view um, player portal for their students. They knew it backwards and forwards. They were very, very familiar. Uh, ExamView was presenting a cloud-based solution that was going to look exactly like um, the ExamView that the teachers were using on their uh, on their computers. Um, so, for me, it was a win-win situation. It was an application that this that the teachers knew, and it was going to be cloud-based. What more? What more were you looking for? Particularly um, when I reached out to the company and found out that. Um, as a beta tester, we would see, receive a special uh, introductory price. And that introductory price was $2.50 per user. I thought this was fantastic. I was going to pay for it myself out of my own pocket. Um, but the school was, was very willing to, to invest this amount of money to make sure that the, the, the teachers had a, a right testing tool and that the students were still using technology in, in testing. So they 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 really we really were interested in, in investigating and really using this this cloud to, uh, solution it was promised to me by January of, of 2015 I believe I, I made the um, the purchase somewhere in November of 2014 and to this day uh, the platform is still under construction um, and that became a, a very very big problem for us. Right. June of 2014, right? June of 2014, um, I was reading the Daily News on a Sunday, and I read an article about a school that I've heard about for years, St. Joseph by the Sea. It's in Staten Island, New York. Um, most of us who, who live in New York or um, in New Jersey would say it's another country. Um, it's a great, it's a great place and they provide great quality education. Um, St. Joseph's by the Sea um, used this great application called ExamSoft to um, deliver their final exams um, via iPad. They went 100% paperless. And I was floored because I knew that this was a possibility. I knew truly um, that it was a possibility. Um, the the Struggle was, ExamSoft was a, a, a product that was new to the the, the K-12 uh, realm. And I, as you know, something that's new, you want to leave it, let others um, figure out all the the problems, and and really figure and, and then really catch up with it when it's um, when it's perfected. Or in, in the technology world, we say robust. So I, I said I'm going to leave ExamSoft for a year, and then I'll inquire later. February 24th of 2015, um, I set up a visit to go to uh, St. Joseph's by the Sea. I take some um, some faculty members with me um, because I want them to see this um, this application really in action. Um, we go to classrooms, um, we go uh, and we have meetings with administrators, and they speak to us about this great application, ExamSoft, and what had it, what it has done for their teachers and what it's done for their students and how it has seamlessly helped them introduce technology to their school. Um, I was floored because I, it was everything we were looking for. It was everything that we were looking for and it was something that um, was going to really truly give us a solution at Burden Catholic that was really going to make everything work perfectly for us. And as I said, it was a perfect fit. Me being the person that I am, I made sure that I had an appointment for a demo uh, before I left Staten Island. Uh, before we left Staten Island, I was uh, on the phone with a representative from ExamSoft, and that representative said that they would call me the very next day, and, and we would have a conversation, and, and we did. We really, really, truly did. The people that I... Um, the people I take with me, I, I, I don't do this alone. Um, I don't believe in this lone ranger notion of, of technology. You have to have companions. I and mean, you have to have a collection of people that, that really 
fit the different areas of, of technology. Um, for example, my, my degree is in educational technology and planning. Um, I really majored in stuff. And when I say stuff, I'm really the, the person that you want to um, consult for you about equipment, about devices, about um, different applications, about networking, um, about uh, pulling wires. I, I, I am the person that, that knows that stuff. Um, the people that you see on the screen, Mr. Mr. Al Spiegel, uh, Al Spiegel is our laptop coordinator, and he also is our administrative data coordinator. He's really uh, my right-hand man. He is, he is the tech person of our, of our committee, of our crew. Um, he knows all the ins and outs of, of how, our, um, how our application is supposed to work and where it goes and, and, and how long it should be there. He knows all that stuff. Um, Jorge Mascaro, um, he is a member of the computer science department. He teaches programming. Uh, Flash and CAD. He's a, he's the person that knows programs. Uh, he knows applications and he knows them. He knows them very well, and he he's able to present them in such a way that anybody can learn it. Right. So it, he's a great asset to this to this team. Uh, uh, another member of our team is Dr. Lou Faso. Lou Faso is a science department member, and he is I pretty I pretty much say a pro in in testing applications and learning management systems. Um, he knows how they work. He knows what they can do, what they can't do. He can figure out how to import something or how to make this uh, question look right in the situation. He's excellent. So you combine this all together, you're pretty, you have a pretty solid team of people who are going to be looking for a solution for, for, for schools, uh, particularly for Burden Catholic. Um, when we went um, we, we went for the purpose, and we, we listened to this demonstration for the purpose of finding a solution that was going to be secure for our, um, for our students and that would not eat up a lot of our bandwidth and would not deal with the issue and our struggle of times of, of, of connectivity. And ExamSoft did that. Um, the, the product really, really is, is fantastic, um, amazing. February 26, we actually um, uh, heard the demonstration, and on March 4th, we, we made the purchase, and it was the best purchase we could ever make. Um, we were able to get uh, the purchase for mixed devices. Uh, because we have uh, our freshmen with iPads, that's great, because we know ExamSurf works very, very well on iPads. Uh, but we also um, have our upper classroom with Lenovo's. So ExamSoft was able to provide us with a license that would allow us to work for, um, allow, us, allow us to work on, on both of those platforms. So it was, it was a win-win situation for us. Right? What did we do as far as implementation? Well, we developed a, a plan for imp uh, implementation. Um, we began that on uh, the week of, of March, uh, March 2nd. And really, we had one goal in place, and that was to have paperless file exams. Uh, I, I'm very much um, into the, the practice in the Catholic schools of case, copy and seal everything. Um, we were going to do what other people had been doing, um, but we wanted to do it, and we wanted to do it better. Right? March 2nd, our goal was to provide uh, paperless final exams. Um, our senior exams. Uh, would it begin the week of May 18th? And actually, we are on our, our third day of those final exams, and I'll share our experience uh, with, the, with, with ExamSoft uh, in a few minutes. And our upperclassmen, um, the final exams begin the week of, of, of June 8th. Um, we knew that we needed to implement this. We knew that we needed to um, provide our faculty an opportunity to challenge themselves. So we knew that paperless exams, this end of the year what was going to happen. Um, how did we do this? Well, we knew we had to alert department chair persons and the faculty. Um, we wanted to really, really come in as, as the greatest cheerleaders in the world of this product. This was the greatest solution in the world as far as, as, as testing solutions um, would, would, would ever be presented. Um, what I did was I gave them videos that I found uh, about uh, exam soft. I found particularly a, a lot of them on YouTube. Uh, I found articles, uh, articles that spoke of the virtues of exam soft, 
it also spoke about the virtues of of ExamSoft not only in a in a, a, a school setting but and on the different levels of of ExamSoft uh, law schools uh, medical schools this was not a product that was being used by um, Mrs. Katzenjammer's second grade class. This was a, a product that had been tested over and over again in, in very large settings um, with, with very extensive uh, types of, of, of people. Right? So we, we wanted to make sure that, the, that our faculty got those, that, that, that message across, that this was not an ordinary, um, ordinary testing tool. And, and we also provide them with other pro program success stories on this platform. So we, we gave them all the, the positive experiences of ExamSoft and, and, and hoped that this would get to, get to them as, as being um, something that was going to be a great solution for them and an even greater solution for, for our students. Once we, we sent that message out, once we put that message into their hands and gave them a day or two to, uh, to, to savor uh, this experience and, and even ask some questions about um, ExamSoft, um, we, we began to create a, a, a vanguard group. Um, again, the goal was to have teachers teach teachers. And that's something that, that um, we find to be very important to us. Um, community in a Catholic school is part of the essential element of, of, of Catholic education. If you don't have community, um, you're, you're missing out on a whole level of experience of Catholic education. And it's not only community with the, with the students, but it's community among your teachers. Right? Teachers can provide um, students with a great um, experience. And teachers teaching other teachers provide teachers with a greater experience. Right? It's one thing to bring in that professional, have them stand up there as a lone ranger and do a great PowerPoint presentation and speak about uh, the latest and greatest, but it's more profound when it comes from um, the average person who's next door to you. So we wanted to make sure that we had this particular group. We called it a Vanguard group. Um, that group would consist of a department chair and a member. What we were hoping to get was at least two people per department. Now, if the department chair was a person that was not very, very, very tech savvy, well, our goal was to get at least two people uh, per department who understood the concept of ExamSoft and, and what it could do and, and, and what it could achieve for them. Right? Our largest department would have eight members, so if we had just two people from that department, um, again, half your, half your department or, or a good percentage of your, your department would be uh, exposed to ExamSoft and they would really truly be able to, to work with the people um, who, who needed to be worked with. Our next step was we had to answer this question for ourselves. Uh, what do teachers need to know? Well, we said our goal was this. There are there were five sections, five sections um, of the different modules that we needed to uh, look at for ExamSoft. Um, and we said as a group, what do teachers need to know? They need to know how to make questions and they need to know how to make a test. So we made sure that um, these members of this Vanguard group would be on the webinar that would be um, teaching about these two sections, questions and assessment. And we wanted to make sure that they were there. Right? Um, the faculty were invited to webinar, to the web-based training. Um, they were in their own room, so they were comfortable. It wasn't like we had to come to one location and, and, um, and put ourselves in, in, in uncomfortable chairs. Stay in your classroom. It's a webinar, uh, but again, you're also teaching a, a notion of learning in, in a different way, right? And we encourage others to meet with other participants and share facts once the once the webinar was over. Right? We had great um, we had great people presenting to us. We had a great person presenting to us who was able to make sure that the webinar was done done reasonably in a reasonable amount of time. Ninety minutes was the expectation of being on the webinar, and we did do ninety minutes with, um, with question and answer. But it was really, really an opportunity for our, our faculty to learn about those two modules, questions and assessments, and gain all the experience that they were going to need to to know about 
creating a test in ExamSoft and, um, and about delivering that test in ExamSoft. Um, once they had these uh, two modules down, then we asked those teams to take their experience and share their experience with their entire department. Right? We asked them to have a department meeting, which would be the formal way of doing it, and showing um, the members what they, what they experienced and what they learned, and also do it informally. Do it in the faculty room. Do it at lunch. I know there's more to talk about at lunch, but do it at lunch because it's something new. And it was a hope to bring a level of excitement that would allow uh, teachers to know that th this was not just uh, this was not just a, a, a solution, but it was a, it was a dream. It was a, it was a dream. It was an answer to their prayers. So we wanted them to really truly um, work with that notion and keep that notion in place. Right? March 16th, 2015. We now turn over the teacher accounts and open them and make them active to, um, to all our teachers, right? And we had one goal in place. Teachers should give an assessment before April 1st, right? March 16th, April 1st, right? There's, there's a decent amount of time in there. April 1st was actually, um, actually Holy Thursday for us. So we wanted to make sure that teachers had had that time period um, to get in there and and to really um, understand and play with their exam soft account and the space that was there, that was within. What do we want the teachers to do? Well, I listed some basic things on the screen. We wanted them to um, import questions. Why should you create a test if you already have it? You should not have to recreate the wheel. Uh, right, if, if you already have the test. So learn to import some questions, right? Use the tutorials and, and, and learn to import those questions. Listen to your peers, right? We wanted them to create questions, type in some questions of their own. Um, set up an assessment. We wanted them to make mistakes. And this was very important for me. The key thing is, is we wanted them to laugh with their students and other fellow teachers about their mistakes. Mistakes make you better. Right, you learn from your mistakes, um, and it's um, and it's part of the process. Now we know, I know that this was a process that was pretty speedy, but the goal was always there: make sure that we're giving paperless file exams. Um, and the only way that we should do this is to make sure that the students are not taking an exam soft test the very first time um, during the final exam. They should have experienced the exam soft um, application as well as the teachers have experienced it. So it should not happen that very first time. And the end result was was us to for them to share share best practices. Right? It's very important that those best practices were shared. Right? Let me give you some of the challenges. If you've been involved in schools a while, you know this notion. Um, it's new. It's February. You want us to learn something new. It's new. Do we have to use this for this year? Snow days have set me back so far. Doesn't he know that we are full-time teachers and have far too much to do? Use it for final exams. That is about three months away. And again, this is new. So again, it becomes a struggle, right? Those are the, the daily challenges. Um, anytime you present something new to a faculty, you, you got to experience some type of, of resistance. Right? And when you talk about faculty, let me give you the perspective of the faculty. Right? What you see in front of you is, is two of the three boards that hang outside of our, um, hang outside of our, our faculty room. One is for uh, 20 years of service. One is for 30 years of service. Well, if you look at the 20 years of service, there's lots of names up there. By the way, most of those people are still here in the school. 30 years of service, same thing, lots of names. Again, I think there's maybe two people who are dead on the list, but most of, my, uh, the, most of the other people are here in the school. Right? I'll, I'll give you the other perspective. This is our 40 year of service, 40 years of service. Um, there's one person on that board who uh, is deceased. The rest are still here in the school. So when you talk about a, a perspective of our faculty, you're talking about a, a, a faculty that is very, very dedicated to what they do. Right? This is what they had to say 
Um, this is what they had to say about ExamSoft. Um, the greatest thing that was uh, that was put together was, uh, please get us something that will make grading easy. Um, you know, you have you have people that were into routine. You have people that were um, used to doing things their particular way. Um, it was part of their life. It was part of who they were. Right? The faculty perspective was this is something new, and it was going to challenge the way that they they did things, right? And the way that they presented, and the way that they thought. Right? But you still had people who who were still providing you um, feedback like this. I just graded a 50 question test with essays for 66 students in 30 minutes. I'm in time saving heaven. Thank you. And of course, that's me that's saying this is so cool. Right? It, it's still it's still a great perspective. The faculty uh, were challenged. They were challenged to um, attain a goal. The goal was to get paperless exams um, at the end of the school year, and they they lived up to it. Right. Again, you still have a lot of the challenges that were there, right? You know, you, you always have the notion that it's far too late in the year to do something new. Um, you've had people who would have found it difficult, but again, the idea of community where fellow teachers stepped in to help them um, understand it better makes it all, all, all it makes it a great experience. Um, you know, where was this program 20 years ago? Yeah, you really have a whole different perspective for the faculty. Um, but the whole struggle with the faculty was this. Um, they wish they had more training as far as exams off went. They had wish they had more time to prepare. Um, and they really, um, really don't want to look uh, like they don't know what they're doing in front of children. Um, that's a fear. That's a fear of mine. Um, and it, they, they were struggling with some of the things that, that make it easy. Right? The idea of giving their own final would be an experience as well. Let's let's look at the let's look at the perspective of student responses. Um, our students found this um, not challenging because they were now using that that educational tool for what it was to be a tool. Right? You had students that loved it, and you have two students that hate it. Um, you know, you have the practical student who was interested, you know, because he did not have to look for a pencil. Um, you had students that were very much into the technology, where you had sheets that could pop up with their formulas, and that was so cool they didn't have to worry about the other stuff. Um, you had people that um, were able to, to input, you know, uh, different things into the the, the tests. Uh, the student perspective uh, was that it, it allowed them to be adults. Uh, I feel like a grown-up. My teacher trusts me with my test because the test was secure. It was not something that they could get to unless they had a password. Um, ExamSoft made me treat my computer uh, with more care. You know, I'm not going to toss around because I know I'm holding on to this exam. Right? So the student perspective was, was a very different perspective, but because they, be, they were able to use the technology that they were given, and it, and it was uh, really for the purpose of learning and not for the purpose of maybe game playing. Right? So you really... You really, really had a, a great product for them, right? When you talk about the reliability of the software, this is my line. Um, a product is only as good as the people who sell it. The people at ExamSoft, and they told me not to do this, but, I, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, when you talk about the reliability of ExamSoft, um, the people that you see in the screen are, are the people that I dealt with from the beginning with ExamSoft. They're excellent. Um, they will never, ever leave you hanging. Um, the program has never been um, down. Um, the people have never been uh, uh, unable to reach me when I ask them a question. Um, they've always been available. Um, from Emma, uh, who started the whole process to us, to the young lady in the green sweater, Julia, who is, is a genius at presenting uh, exam soft to people. If you are um, a school that's looking for um, Looking to buy exams off, make sure that you have Julia as your as your uh, your consultant from the beginning. She will school you in everything, and she knows how to work well with different groups. Tammy, who is our account manager right now, who responds to me instantly uh, when I have a, a question. And what other company can you speak to a vice president uh, often 
um, to share strategies about um, how best to um, change this product so it can better serve not only your school but other schools um, around the world. Um, it's a great, great product, and it never, it never ends. The support never ever ends. There's telephone numbers, there's emails, there's everything that goes along with it. It never ever ends, right? This last piece, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really, and I've asked that, that I can put this in. Um, there's three things that you have to make sure that you have um, to uh, to have ExamSoft as part of your your learning environment. Uh, you have to have enough bandwidth. There's going to be a time where uh, you will ask students to download um, an, an exam or a test to their device. Um, they're going to do it at the same time. Um, sometimes it may just be a class. It may be an entire grade. It may be a school. If you don't have the bandwidth, you're going to um, send your system into apoplexy. It's going, it's going, to, it's going to have a heart attack. Um, so you want to make sure you have the, the appropriate bandwidth. I would say one gig or, or, or better to make sure that you have. Um, your content filter. Make sure that your content filter ma matches your bandwidth. Right? The key word, is th uh, key word is throughput. Make sure that you have the appropriate throughput um, for your bandwidth. And along with that, make sure that your firewall um, it, it matches your bandwidth. Right? These, are, these are important. Right? I would ha even have these things checked out before um, I even begin to, um, to look at uh, exams. So I'll see if you're, if you're um, see if your infrastructure can handle this. Um, this was my presentation. Um, if there are any questions, I know I know Jason will provide us with an opportunity. But this is my presentation, and I, I want you to truly know um, I'm passionate about ExamSoft. Um, it has changed the whole complexion of exam taking here at Burden Catholic, and um, we're on the third day of giving. Uh, final exams or delivering final exams through ExamSoft, and it's not one thing wrong, not an issue. It's been flawless, right? And it, I, I think it's been a savior for us. Again, um, thank you for this opportunity, and, and I'm sure there are questions, and, and I will answer them as they come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Hall. If you do have questions, please feel free to enter them into the questions panel. Uh, we will have a brief Q&A session in just a moment. At this time, I would like to remind everyone of our upcoming webinar entitled Student Acceptance Factors to Shape a Successful Full-Scale Implementation, which is presented by Dr. Veronica, Veronica Mickelson of the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. This presentation is uh, scheduled for tomorrow, Thursday, May 21st at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. You will also receive a short seven-question survey please do feel free to complete this survey. We encourage you to do so, so that way we may continue to provide relevant content in all of our presentations. We do have a couple of questions. Uh, with that, um, the first question is, uh, can you, your presentation is incredibly thorough. Are there any lessons learned that you have omitted for the sake of time? I, I would say the, the, lesson that, the lessons that I've omitted um, really is this. Uh, when you talk about faculty, um, faculty have to be um, they have to be part of your planning process. Uh, it, this has to be something that the faculty wants. Um, a testing tool such as uh, ExamSoft um, is really not a toy. It's not something that either um, they use or don't use. It really should be a, a part of a, one of your educational policies. The only way of testing here at my school is through ExamSoft. Um, that, that's one thing that I left out. Thank you so much, Brother Hall. We have one additional question. It seems that your institution has uh, quite a, a capital funding available. How do you propose schools with less funds implement this sort of process and program using iPads and a platform like ExamSoft? Uh, my, big, my big thing uh, with with finding uh, funding for such an event, such a, a process like this, is is benefactors. Um, we we at Bergen Catholic we we are blessed to have um, we blessed to have some people that make sure that our technology is is functioning and functioning well. Um, you have to find those benefactors. Um, ExamSoft is is an investment. It's an investment in 
um, the, the teaching and learning of your students. If, that, if you cannot afford that investment, um, you got to find a way to afford it. I, I, I don't know how uh, we've gone for the, this many years without an application like ExamSoft. Um, I, I say finding benefactors. Um, this, this was paid for by a benefactor. Again, this was something that, that came in, um, in the middle of winter. This was not something that was a line item for us. Um, I had to go and, um, uh, you know, beg, bar, and steal to make sure that this happened for our faculty. Thank you so much, Brother Hall. Do you have any closing thoughts? I, I think everybody who's listening should get exams off. That's, that's my closing thought. Um, I think it's um, I think it's one of the finest solutions for um, test taking. And if you don't, if you don't have it, find some way to get it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Brother Hall. This concludes today's presentation. As a reminder, today's presentation is recorded. Within the next few days, all attendees and registrants will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording. Please feel free to share this recording with your colleagues as you see fit. Thank you so much, Brother Hall, for sharing your time and expertise and your experience with us. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your afternoon to make this presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time and attendance. Have a great afternoon.